Welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. We are going to look at how to make a histogram using our TI-83 or 84 calculator. Now, in this example, I want to use these numbers as my data for the histogram. Let's go ahead and grab our calculators and see how this process works. Now, the first thing we want to do is get all of this data into the calculator. To do this, start by pressing your STAT button. You should have the first thing selected, which says Edit, and go ahead and press Enter. Here's where we want, want to enter in all of this data. So 7, Enter, 7, Enter, 7, Enter, 8, Enter, 8, Enter, 8, Enter. Boy, quite a bit of values, but they're all in there. Now, once you have all the data entered in, we want to start setting up the calculator so it can display our histogram correctly. So, press your window key to see what your window is set at. The X values, we want to represent the values of our variables. So, if we take a look at our data, we're using variables, say, between 7 and 13. Now, I want to give myself a little extra space, so I want my x minimum to be 6, and my x maximum to be 14. Let's scroll on down to the y values. The y values are for the vertical direction, and so we want to put numbers that involve how many of these things we have. So notice how I have three sevens, and I have five eights. It looks like only one nine, three tens. So for my frequency, I want to include a, a range of values, you know, probably smaller than one, which is the, the smallest number of things I have, but larger than five. So I'm going to use all the way down to negative one, and I think I'll put the maximum of my scale, let's say at eight. That'll give me a pretty good picture. All right, now that my window is set, I need to go set my stat plot. You'll notice that it's this first button, but first I have to press second and then stat plot. Now the first one should be highlighted, so go ahead and press enter and see what options we can change. The first thing I want to do is turn my stat plot on, so I'll press enter. Then I'll scroll down and select the type of plot we are going to do. Notice the one on the end with all those little bars? That's our histogram, so let's select that and press enter. Now the calculator wants to know where is all this data to build the histogram. So I can scroll down one more and see that L1 is already selected. All right, things are looking pretty good. Finally, let's go ahead and press our graph button and take a look at our histogram. Now you'll notice that it looks pretty plain at first, but here's how we can read it. Along the horizontal direction, it gives us the values of our variables. So this first bar represents our sevens. The next bar, those are the eights. There's my little short bar for the nine. Then I have my tens, elevens, twelves, and that little bar on the end for thirteen. There's some little dots off to the left that give us an idea of the frequency. So for my seven bar, I can see that it goes up one, two, three dots. So there are three sevens. Now, if you don't like looking at the plain histogram, that's okay. You can have the calculator tell you these different values. Just press your trace button to bring up uh, how big each of these bars are. So you'll notice that my little cursor is blinking way over here. It says it's at the 6 spot, and n equals 0, well, I don't have any 6s. If I press my right arrow button, it jumps to that first bar. And it says, all right, you are on the 7 bar, and looks like you have three of them. So in this way, you can jump among the bars and see exactly what they are and how tall they are without having to interpret the dots or, or figure out what bar should be plotted there. So right now I'm on top of the 10 bar, and sure enough, there are three of them. And there you have it. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit MySecretMathTutor.com.